terrible Danny diagrams, but we'll go ahead and draw them anyway. The standard bow is roughly a D shape. And the arrow sits on a rest of some description at the front here and clips onto the string at the back. If your arrow is not level when it's sitting in the bow, you will have movement either that way or that way and you'll generate a hole that is that shape when you shoot through a piece of paper. This can be, this, the, 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 the level of the arrow can be adjusted either here with a, a traditional bow, it can only really be adjusted there unless you've got an arrow rest. It can only be adjusted there. So you can adjust your up and down movement, but there's also a front view of the bow with an arrow sitting on there and you can adjust this way as well. Again, with a traditional bow, it's much harder to adjust that and it's normally set with the bow as it comes out of the factory. But with a compound bow, the compound bows have, I'm not even gonna try and draw a compound bow. The compound bows have an adjustable front sight that's adjustable up, down, and left and right. Now that allows you to skew the arrow so that the arrow will either fire or come out of the bow over that way or over this way. When the bow's set up perfectly, especially a compound bow, I can't really speak for traditional bows because a lot of traditional bows, the arrow isn't level, it's actually kicked up a little bit at the back. With a compound bow, you have to get all of these adjustments right. So you get your, your knocking point on the string, which is normally between a D loop so that the arrow sits very firmly and then you have to adjust up and down to get the arrow level this way. And then you have to adjust, adjust left and right on the front side to get the arrow, I suppose, level, centered from front to back across the front to uh, the left to right axis. Now, the hole that my bow made, I've just actually screwed a piece of paper up in frustration and thrown it on the floor. The hole that my bow made. Yeah, I'm going to see it very well. So we'll just put a, a frame in there. The hole that my, my bow made was pretty much perfect. It was, you know, again, exaggerated in size. A round hole with three like that. Now, if it was wrong up and down, it would be an ellipse, a vertical ellipse hole with the veins showing through. If it was wrong left to right, it would be a horizontal ellipse with the veins showing through. And that's how you can tell the difference. Um, I set my bow up, my compound up by eye and with a bow square and it seems to be, that's the first time I've ever done a paper test on it, it seems to be almost almost spot on. But um, that's how you work out whether your bow's set up properly. Thanks for taking the time to watch guys and we'll see you in our next one.
If your bow is set up correctly, it will make a perfectly round hole like that with your fletchings making lines such as this. If the bow isn't set up correctly, it will make a slightly elliptical hole and you'll be able to see that potentially your arrows are flying crooked. Now, forgive my terrible, terrible drawing. The reason the arrows fly crooked is because your arrow is supported on most bows in two places, one on the string and one on the, the arrow rest or your hand if you're using a hand rest bow. So if we picture a very crude bow with an arrow attached to the string, one support point is here, one support point is there. Now if this support point is higher or lower than the support point at the string, you'll end up with a hole, this is exaggerated obviously, a hole that's that shape. Now you've also got the sideways movement. Now on a lot of bows, um, especially more traditional bows, you've got no option there. When you're looking at this bow from the front or from the back, the bow is this shape. The arrow is sitting maybe in a rest or on a rest there. And you can't see where the, where the arrow is attached to the string at the back. And with a more traditional bow, you don't have much choice in that matter apart from moving the knocking point up and down. With a compound bow, you've normally got adjustments on the on the arrow rest at the front that allows you to tilt the arrow. Um, what you've also got, looking on this view, is is movement this way and this way. And again, on a traditional bow, you have virtually no choice. I think I might have just messed that all up. On a traditional bow, and we'll start drawing the drawings again and just scratch that.